One of the areas scarred by Turkey's aggressive foreign policy is northeast Syria. In October of 2019, Turkey invaded the area under the guise of ridding the region of Kurdish terrorists. 200,000 people fled the fighting, and it threatened a growing democracy in the region. Nadine Mayenza, the vice chair of the U.S. International Commission for Religious Freedom, visited this region, and we talked with Mayenza from our Jerusalem studio. Well, Nadine Mayenza, thanks for joining us. Uh, tell us the purpose of your trip right now. So I came um, to Northeast Syria in my own personal capacity to really understand conditions for religious minorities and also to understand the governance here, how this government that fought to, to liberate these areas from ISIS set up self-governance that has protected religious freedom and gender. How would you describe this region in, in, as opposed to so many other places around the Middle East? Well, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, where I serve as a commissioner, has identified it as having one of the best religious freedom conditions in the region. It's the only place you can change your religion legally, the only place that converts can even build churches. It has really religious freedom conditions that are really unseen anywhere else in the region. I've been there before, too, and uh, met many of the people. How would you describe their mood right now? We know that last year, October of 2019, they went through a horrific war. What's their uh, mood and status right now? Well, they're working to continue to build this governance that has really protected the conditions here. But there's fear that Turkey is going to come in again. And as we've, you know, USERF documented, as has UN Watch and, and Amnesty International, a lot of other organizations, that when Turkey comes in and occupies land, they commit all sorts of atrocities against Yazidis, Christians, and other religious minorities, including killings, rapes, kidnapping, destruction of religious sites. And so what they're seeing is these crimes occur, people fleeing those areas, and the fear that that's going to continue and, and bring more stability. There's fear that the regime will come in. And the regime, although a lot of people believe they've made a deal with Christians to protect them, the way it works in northeast Syria is if, if the regime does come back here, the Christians will be the first ones targeted because they'll be seen as disloyal to Assad. What role do the U.S. troops play there? I know there's not a lot, but what role do they play? Right now, they really play as, as bringing stability. So it's important that, that a small amount of troops are here. Northeast Syria is so unique in that they should be a conservative's dream. They don't need nation building. They don't need America to come here and t show them how to govern, show them how to run a country. They're doing a really good job of this. What they need is for us to keep some troops here, lift sanctions, which USERF has recommended, give them political recognition, which again, USERF has recommended, and help them to be able to, or allow them, I should say, to just be able to grow their own government, provide um, services to their people, and be able to have a future. And so um, the troops really aren't needed to do a whole lot other than to just be a, a force for stability for, for this moment while they're making this transition. As a state, I should say, in a future Syria, because they, they're not separatists. They don't want their own country. What they want to be is a part of a future Syria. Yeah, and I know they were really the boots on the ground against the fight on ISIS. Uh, thousands of them uh, paid with their lives. So what would you say that people in the United States really need to know about this area? They need to know that this is a remarkable area. They share our values. Um, they are great allies to the United States. You know, this could be the, the most important refuge for religious minorities in the Middle East. You know, and, and the, the thing about it is it's in a, a great situation right now to do that. They figured out how to beat extremism permanently, which is something we haven't been able to do in Afghanistan or in Iraq. It takes governance, of security, and ideology. And what they've done is, is they have governance that they've built that I've seen with my own eyes from the grassroots up, this democracy. They vote for people from a communal level on up. And they have security in the Syrian Democratic Forces, the strongest fighters on the ground. And then the ideology is religious freedom, gender equality, and, and even conservation. A refuge for Christians to be able to live and practice their faith. I met with Kurdish um, Muslim converts that were able to build a church. They got a license to build a church. Nowhere else in the Middle East would that be allowed. It's such a small step for the United States to support them, giving them political recognition, lifting their sanctions. People could come here and invest and help build this country, or this government, I should say, as part of a future Syria. Um, and they should have to be included in talks for, for a future Syria. It makes a lot of sense, like I said, a conservative's dream. So, but I think most people are, are unaware of it. So I was here, hopefully, to, to raise awareness of, of, of what a unique place this is um, for Christians, religious minorities, and also even moderate Muslims who are able to practice their faith here. Nadine, final question. How can Christians pray about the situation there in northeast Syria? Sure, people can pray for the Christians here in particular. People can pray for the leadership here, for the leadership in the U.S. and around the world. That, that, um, that, that they'll have wisdom. This is maybe the most complicated place in the world with Turkey on the border trying to come in. You have Iran now that is coming. You have Russia. You know, but you also have these people here that are fighting for their own future. And they're doing it by themselves. They're not getting a whole lot of support from the international community. This used to be the headquarters of the ISIS caliphate. Three years later, they now have the best religious freedom conditions in the Middle East, with, with no one really making them do it. They did it on their own. 
that should be rewarded, not just rewarded, but that serves our interests, frankly. In the United States, it serves our interest to have our allies here be strong. And so I'm hoping that Americans understand that. They'll pray for them. They'll stand with their brothers and sisters in Christ that, that are here. Um, and, and it's really a win-win for the United States. Well, Nadine Mayenza, thanks so much for joining us there in Northeast Syria. Appreciate it very much.